Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to introduce today's podcast guest, um, the traveling Dutchman, Jasper Rivers. Uh, Jasper is a world traveler, entrepreneur, and author of his brand new book, Get Paid for Your Pad. Um, super excited to have him on the show. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm here with my buddy Jasper Rivers, uh, aka the traveling Dutchman. Very excited to have him on today. Um, this is actually take four. We've had some technical difficulties, but we're finally up and running. Jasper, thanks for being here, and thanks for being so patient. Yeah, you're welcome, Matt. Thanks for having me on the show. Awesome. So, uh, Jasper, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and uh, your website, The Traveling Dutchman, and uh, just kind of give us um, you know, some more information into your background and your story. Sure. So I grew up in the Netherlands and uh, sort of followed the sort of standard path early in my life. Went to high school, went to university, got a job, and um, kind of always felt like I wanted to do something different, but didn't really know what it was. So, you know, um, I figured I'd just try and uh, be successful in my career. And I got a finance job in Amsterdam, um, trading stocks and options. Did it for about five years, then decided I was ready for a new challenge and I moved to Chicago, uh, working for the same firm. And uh, did that about one year or so. And then uh, I finally decided that I, uh, I didn't really wanna spend my whole life working in the office, looking at a bunch of flat screens. and. Uh, made the decision to uh, to give it all up and I started traveling and that's what I've been doing since. Awesome. So, you know, I, I'm guessing you were in a pretty financially stable job. Uh, you know, you're in finance. That's always well paying. Um, so what made you kind of take that giant leap of, you know, a secure, stable job, stable income um, to just travel the world? I mean, it seems like pretty substantial risk uh, there. So kind of walk us through that. Yeah. What really motivated you to do that? Well, my biggest motivation was that the, the thought of just kind of living my life without ever trying to, to do what I really wanted and having regrets later on in life, that thought like, seemed so horrible to me. That it was almost like I didn't have an option, you know. I was I was 32 at the time, and I was pretty sure that if I if I didn't take the chance right now, that it, it was going to only get harder and harder to to do it later on in life, you know. Once you once you settle down and you know have a family and stuff, obviously it becomes uh, much more difficult than if you're uh, if you're just by yourself. It was really, I I just didn't want to live with the idea of not ever having tried to to really just pursue my dream and, and my passion. And so what made you decide on travel? Um, you know, why not stay wherever you were and kind of, you know, maybe just open up your own business or, I don't know, uh, sail around a lake near you or something like that. What, what was it about travel that excited you and motivated you as well? I just wanted to experience what it would be like to have the ultimate freedom so I didn't want to be bound to a certain location. I just wanted to know what it was like to be able to go wherever I wanted, to do whatever I want, and to be with whoever, whatever, uh, whoever I wanted. So yeah, it's kind of like this this adventurous, uh, spontaneous sort of lifestyle that I uh, I just wanted to know what it was like. And deep down inside, I felt like that that's what I wanted, you know, to have that awesome. freedom. Very cool. And so I'm guessing you initially funded your travels, um, you know, from your previous job. Um, so is that the case? How, how did you initially, uh, you know, fund your travels and um, all that good stuff? Yeah, so I, I did save up some money. And in the, in the first few years, I, uh, um, I, I kind of just used my savings. Um, I had an apartment in Amsterdam that I rented out on the long term as well. So that gave me a little bit of extra money, but uh, I, I I did start 
looking into you know money uh, making money online from from the day I started traveling you know I remember literally googling mm -hmm. how to make money online when I was in uh, in my first mm -hmm. destination which was which was Brazil so yeah I, I tried all sorts of things and you know most of thing most of these things didn't work and you know some worked for a little bit and you know some were a bit more successful but uh, but yeah I definitely was in a in a fairly comfortable position where I, I had my house and I did have some savings behind awesome. it as well. And so um, I listened to uh, another interview you did and you talked about one way in which uh, you made money in Brazil, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. Uh, could you could you share that with our listeners? <laughs> yeah, so there uh, in, in Brazil, Brazil is a big country and and there were all these keywords um, that millions of people were searching for every every month in Google, and uh, you know these were some some governmental websites that a lot of people had to use for like tax purposes and stuff. And um, so I bought a bunch of domain names, and uh, the, where the URL was equal to the keyword. And then I, I hired somebody to write some Portuguese content on the site and basically just optimized the whole website for this one keyword. And then I would put uh, Google AdSense uh, on the website to monetize it. And, uh, well, I think the particular case that you're referring to is that at some point uh, the government actually ran a Google AdWords campaign so the website, my website, they were advertising on my website to get people to go to the, the real website, which was the website that we were searching for in the first place. So it was, uh, it was a bit of a, uh, yeah. you know, a gray area that I was operating in. And, uh, yeah. you know, at the time I was, I was very new to the Internet. And, you know, I, I just literally was just trying to figure out, like, how, how everything worked. And, and just this seemed like... Like uh, I, I found, I felt like I had found like a little loophole or something, but uh, obviously Google wasn't very happy with what I was doing, so they uh, yeah, awesome. it didn't take very long until they cut me off. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. <laughs> and just a disclaimer to all of our yeah. listeners: yeah, probably you know maybe not the most sustainable business, but definitely um, you know whatever works at the time, I guess. But uh, awesome. So um, how do you uh, make your living now? Yeah. And uh, you know what? It, kind of talk us through um, what you've got going on currently. Yeah, so uh, about two years ago, I I found this uh, this apartment rental website called Airbnb, and um, I was at the time I was renting out my house long term, but I wasn't very happy with with the return, and also I didn't like the fact that I couldn't stay in my own apartment when I was back in Amsterdam, so. I figured I'd give Airbnb a try, and uh, it was a, a big success from the get-go. Um, within a few months, I was uh, I had like almost 100% occupancy, and um, I was able to raise prices quite a bit in, until the point where I was kind of putting a putting in like a, a full-time income. So I kind of abandoned everything else I was doing, and just really started focusing on. You know how do I how do I do this Airbnb thing? Uh, how do I perfectionize it? How do I optimize my listing? You know, and as I was doing that, like I was able to raise my prices even further. And then, you know, it was such a revelation to me. Uh, you know, I was making two and a half to three times as much as when I was renting it out in the long term. And um, so that's basically what I've been uh, drawing my income from for the last. Uh, awesome. You know, the and, last um your Regarding that, so. you actually just came out with a book uh, called Get Paid for Your Pad, uh, in which you tell readers uh, how to do just that. And uh, so could you give us a quick kind of rundown of your book and uh, also just, you know, any advice in case any of uh, our listeners or anyone else is looking to rent out their own apartments and make their own income through uh, doing Yeah, absolutely. So I, I came up with the idea to write this book. Uh, because I noticed that a lot of people didn't know what Airbnb was. And secondly, I noticed that a lot of hosts 
were not making the best out of their listing. A lot of hosts are, you know, they were, they were just making a lot of mistakes and, and not doing uh, the, the things that you need to do in order to be successful. So I started writing my thoughts down, and um, I just figured I wanted to to write like the ultimate resource on Airbnb because I couldn't really find anything good online at the time. There were some websites and there was a couple books, but they they didn't really cover all the different aspects, and they were more like a sort of a, a how-to guide, like how to yeah. create a listing, not so much as how to perfectionize and optimize it. Yeah. So that was really my goal, to create the ultimate Airbnb resource. And, um, you know, it talks about pretty much everything you need to know uh, when running your Airbnb listing, as well as countless examples and templates that you can use, uh, for example, for communicating with your guests. You know, I, I, have, I have a system in place where I send out certain emails to my guests, like before a couple of weeks before arrival and then like a few days before arrival, during their stay, after their stay. And um, so uh, people who, who buy the book can, can really just kind of copy paste all those templates and, you know, paste their own emails on, on uh, based on that. Um, also, I wrote a, a pretty large guidebook that uh, contains all the information that my guests will need when staying at my house. You know, not just the, the technical stuff like how to turn on the radiator, how to how does the oven work, and you know the Wi-Fi and, and stuff like that. But also, you know, what are the what are good places to go for drinks? What are good places to go to eat? You know, what are my my, my own favorite uh, local spots? And um, so that comes along with the book as well, so people can just kind of use that as a base for for their own. Um, and just to give you a few uh, few other insights into the book, it talks about how to prepare your house for arrival for of, of guests. You know, how do you manage like the check-in process? Um, how do you manage like the cleaning? Mm -hmm. How do you communicate with guests before they arrive, which is really important. Um, a, a lot about pricing. Pricing is one of the more complicated aspects of running an Airbnb listing, and um, it also talks about how to get high up in the search rankings on, on it, within Airbnb, as Airbnb it kind of it has like a mini Google, you know, where if you search for a, a place in a certain city, it will show a first page with a bunch of listings and a second and a third page. And as we all know, in Google, being on the first page is a, a very big advantage over being on any of the other pages. And, you know, same is true for Airbnb. So, but in general, it just covers. All right. So, Jasper, thank, thanks for uh, that awesome rundown of your book. Um, could you also talk to us about the Traveling Dutchman, which is uh, your website? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, a few years back, uh, I was I was traveling a lot, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my friends and family were always asking me questions like, "Where are you? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do there?" And I kind of got a little tired of constantly having to update everyone. So I thought, you know what, why don't I just create a travel blog? So I just, I just started off with a few personal stories about the things I've been doing. And, and then I, uh, I was just having a lot of fun with it. So, you know, I started expanding a little bit. I actually wrote a, uh, a travel book um, that people can download for free on my website. But, um, yeah, really just, I was just doing it for fun, you know. I wasn't really planning on, like, making any money with it. But uh, it does come in useful, uh, you know, when I travel, I get, I get offered, like, sponsored trips and free hotel rooms and stuff like that. So, you know, it has some, some nice perks uh, that, that come yeah. along with it. But essentially it was just kind of, uh, you know, a fun thing for me to do and kind of share my adventures awesome. with Very cool. family and, friends uh, and later with, generated quite you know, the with community people from all uh, over the world. Website. Um, very cool to see that as well. Um, could you also talk about how, kind of how travel has helped kind of create a sense of that community and, you know, kind of create relationships with people from all over the world? For example, 
uh, you're from the Netherlands, and here I am Skyping with you, um, although you are currently in L.A., but, um, you know, it's cool just kind of how travel as well as creating your own website or entrepreneurial ventures just kind of opens so many doors. So could you just kind of expand on that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, before I started traveling, I, I had one sort of fear. I... I had doubts about would I be able to would I be able to travel by myself? Would I get lonely, or you know, would I meet people? And uh, it's just been mind blowing to see how many people you meet when you travel by yourself. You know, so I st I've met so many people over the last four years uh, during my travels. Yep. And often you meet people who are sort of in the same niche or sort of doing a similar thing, right? Um, you know, people who are location independent, uh, these days it's, you know, it's possible to run any type of business uh, from your laptop, from anywhere in the world. And you start building up a whole network of, of like-minded people. And over the last few years, what I would often do is I would get in touch with, uh, with, with some people and see if they were up to up to um, you know sharing like an accommodation or something somewhere, and uh, and and that's really been inspiring, you know, to just sort of camp out somewhere for a month with a, with a bunch of fellow entrepreneurs. That's been uh, extremely inspiring and and also a lot of fun. So, yep. and, I, and you know through through the blog, I also it you have a place on the net where people can find you, right? So I often get like emails from people. Who are either doing something similar or who have questions, and you know, like through my Facebook page, people can see where, where I am. So I often get questions and from, from people who happen to be in the location where, awesome. where I'm at, and, uh, where I'm at know, as well. Since I do follow so your way, blog, I, I am aware too. of some of the awesome places you've been. Uh, for example, Indonesia, um, Australia, uh, all over Europe, etc. Um, so could you kind of uh, walk us through, I, I guess, a typical day um, in the life of the traveling Dutchman. <laughs> well, it's interesting because typical days don't really exist for me, to be honest. So, you know, it just really depends on That's where I am. Good place. Uh, but typically, I I wake up like most people do. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I have breakfast, and then usually what I do is I just pull out my laptop, um, check my emails, and uh, sort of schedule the rest of my day. But, uh, you know, it's one thing I'll, I'll say um, is something that I really had to get used to. You know, if you're used to having a like a nine-to-five job and you have a, a boss who tells you what to do, um, it's kind of hard to yep. transform into a person who uh, works for himself and has to motivate, you have to motivate yourself yeah. and tell yourself what to do. And especially in the beginning, I wasn't really being a very sort of strict boss with myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> which resulted in, uh, in me becoming uh, kind of lazy. So that, that's actually been, uh, been a bit of a struggle for me to sort of create a new sort of discipline for myself to, to be to be to be productive and I've gotten a lot better at this but that's basically how I start my day I, I just write down like a bunch of things that I want to get done during the day and then I I won't stop awesome. until yeah, I've, it's definitely you know, I've got those um, I can things imagine, done so that way uh, tough to you, you know, know transform I, I try from to a desk job into you know pretty much being able to do whatever you want so great advice uh, for sure so um, back to your traveling a little bit. Um, could you kind of talk about some of the maybe the top one or two places you've been? And I might, I'm sure it's hard to to narrow it down, but yeah, I mean, I can give you some of my favorite uh, places. I'd say uh, Brazil is probably my favorite country. Uh, I've actually wrote a blog post on this uh, that explains why, but it's mostly because there's just such a positive vibe. In, um, in in Brazil, um, and for some reason, when I land in Brazil, I kind of feel like I'm coming home. You know, it's a it's a weird feeling. 
Uh, it's hard to do, sort of describe and pinpoint why, but but it's definitely like uh, there's an attitude where where people kind of trying to view things in a positive light, and people are tend to be quite uh, expressive and you know uh, uh, extrovert and outgoing, and uh, you know that's something that I really enjoy, just being being around people with positive energy. Mm -hmm. um, another country that I really like is the Philippines. Uh -huh. It's not as well known as some of the other countries in Southeast Asia, and uh, I'm not sure why actually, because in my opinion, it's one of the best travel destinations in Asia. You know, it has a lot of things going for it. First of yep. all, everyone speaks English, so you can actually communicate with with locals, which makes makes it much easier to sort of go off the beaten path. Secondly. It's one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen. You know, it's, it's compiled of over seven thousand islands, and it just seems wherever you go in the Philippines, you're never far away from the from like a a, a beautiful remote uh, white sand beach with tropical crystal clear waters, and um, you know it's it's a it's also a great place to go scuba diving and snorkeling, something that I really enjoy. Plus, just like in Brazil, in, in the Philippines as well, like people seem to have this general positive attitude to life, you know, and, and that's really admirable, specifically given that it's actually kind of a, you know, it's not one of the richest countries in the world, you know, a lot of people have to get by on, on, uh, on not very much money, and then they also get hit by these typhoons and, and natural disasters on a, on a pretty regular base. Mm. Uh, uh, last year, uh, in, I think it was in October, November, uh, a pretty big one hit and uh, destroyed like you know hundreds of thousands of houses. And it actually just completely destroyed a little island that I had recently been. And just to see how, yeah, you know, how they, very how they, how quickly they recover from from these kind of blows. I, it's, time time you know, I, I think it's just really I, uh, just admirable. Fell in love with, and I'm, I've heard the rest of South Asia is absolutely gorgeous. So. Definitely need to get over there as soon as I can. So, um, so Jasper, it does seem like you're someone who is living the dream, per se. You know, you travel the world pretty much, go wherever you want, get paid while you're doing it. Is achieving that kind of lifestyle possible, or is it just a pipe dream, or you, did you just happen to win the lottery or something like that? You know, C could you kind of speak to that a bit for people who do have, you know, hopes and aspirations to travel the world? Um and hopefully, you know, run a business while doing so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I, so I was in a somewhat fortunate position to, to have quite a lot of savings. But during my journey in the last four years, one thing that I've realized is that you definitely do not have to have uh, a lot of money behind you if you want to change your lifestyle. So I've met all these people who were we're just running like small businesses online, you know, making a couple thousand dollars uh, while while they travel. And traveling also doesn't have to be that expensive. You know, you have all these uh, platforms these days where you can you can find like really cheap accommodation. You know, for example, there's there's house sitting websites like housesitting.com is, is is one of them. Housesitters.com it is, I think, where you can basically just look after somebody's house while while they are away, you know. So you basically stay for free. And then there's places like couch surfing. Um, and then also you got to realize that if you go to a low, uh, a lower cost country, you know, like in in, in Central America or in Asia, there's countries where you can hire, where you can rent an apartment for a couple hundred dollars a month. So, you know, I I know a lot of people who go out of the sort of the corporate world and started working in their own business while spending maybe like, you know, a thousand dollars a month. So even if you have, you know, twelve thousand dollars in savings, you can you can get by for, for maybe like up to a year while you're working your business. And from what I've seen is if you are passionate about something and you are willing to put in the effort, it, it doesn't take much more than like six to twelve months to actually build up you know, a, a base income. So, you know, I'm not saying like everyone should just immediately quit their jobs and, you know, and and, and start uh, 
uh, and start traveling and trying, you know, and starting their, their online business. I mean, it's definitely good to sort of prepare um, while you're still working. And I know a lot of people who do that as well, you know. Um, I know people who have started building their business before they quit their jobs, just in the evenings and in the weekends, so that when they quit, they already have, uh, you know, a, a business going. So, and, you know, another option would be to, for example, just move in with your family for six months, you know, and just really minimize cost while you, while you get, your, awesome. get your stuff yeah. going. Great so, no, well, I, I definitely don't really think you need to have hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, behind of, you if you uh, want to change your lifestyle and sort of live your year olds which is the primary audience. So, do you have any other kind of advice for that uh, demographic that um, you would offer uh, to not necessarily travel the world, but just to kind of take the necessary steps to begin living a lifestyle that, you know, we've always dreamed of or something we're passionate about, uh, which may be world travel, it may be starting a business or something like that. So anything there? Well, I'd say the first thing is um, make sure you know what you want, you know, because that's the first step. Like people mm -hmm. have have these dreams and you know but but really the thing is I didn't start figuring out what I really wanted until I was like 32 right and if somebody maybe if somebody had told me at, at a younger age like hey you know what are you doing like is, is this really what you want you know it, it, it's not that easy to find out what you want I mean the, the way that I did it is just by literally just started traveling and and you know, and, and see how that goes. And then I, I ended up liking it, and, and then I ended up getting into writing, you know, for my blog, and then I wrote a book, and, and then it turned out that I was re really enjoying myself, you know, during that process. So, so now I know that writing yeah. a book is something that I really enjoy, you know, and building, like, products around it and sort of teaching people how to do things. That's, uh, that turned out to be a passion of mine, but I didn't know that four years ago. So, you know, it's hard to figure out what you want, but um, it's definitely worth spending a little time or maybe taking some time off, go, you know, hang out in a, in a remote location for a couple of weeks or, or a month or so and, and just really try to figure out what, what it is that you're passionate about because, you know, looking back, I think I, I'm pretty sure the... Uh, the ingredients for being successful starts with doing something that you're really passionate about. Because, you know, being an entrepreneur is is living with ups and downs. You know, like, I think on average 80% of businesses started will fail, you know, within a year or two. And uh, I know that this, this sounds like not the most uh, promising prospect, but, <laughs> but, but I've, I've come to... The conclusion that this is actually something you should embrace because by failing you learn and almost everyone you talk to who's successful they all have all these like failure stories and it's just it's just part of the process you know so my my um, my advice would be like try to figure out what you want and focus on something that you're passionate about then go ahead and and try it and don't be afraid to fail and and don't uh, get discouraged by by failure because the road is gonna it's not gonna be straight line to the top. It's gonna be full of like ups and downs. And I think how you uh, how you manage the the valleys, you know, the, the dark times when you, when you're doubting yourself and you know you're you're doubting your decisions and you really don't know if if, uh, yeah, if you still awesome. want to do it. Awesome and, insights. You know, and um, how you manage those situations. Great segue that's to the next question, which like, um, how successful would be, you're going to be in, I like, in the long term for for a At least in my experience, um, when I went to Australia for uh, study abroad uh, last fall, um, aside from it being absolutely gorgeous and beautiful waters and awesome funny accents. Um, you know, I really learned a lot about myself, um, and I, I did have a lot of time to myself. Um, so could you kind of speak to what travel um, not only does for you in terms of <laughs> visiting amazing places, but um, yeah. how does it kind of develop 
who you are as a person and, you know, what have you learned from travel in that uh, regard? Yeah, it's a good question. And, uh, you know, I think everyone should at some point in their life travel by themselves for a while because it's really amazing, like, what happens when, when you do that, you know. I think when you're living in, in, the, in current society, we are influenced a lot by the people around us, our families, our friends. And when you're by yourself, everyone who you meet um, will, will judge you on who you are at that time, right? Nobody knows anything about you, about your history, about what you do, whatsoever. So people really judge you on, on their impression from you in just maybe like a few minutes or so. And that's, that makes a great situation for reflecting on yourself, thinking about who you are and what you want, and making changes. Because when you try to make changes in, in an environment where everybody knows you, people always have a tendency to sort of like stop you. People kind of want you to be that person that they know. And when you try to change something, you will get a lot of mm. negative feedback because people just don't like that, right? So that's the first thing I'll say is like when you're by yourself, you can, you can really just be whoever you want and no one's going to say anything and no one's going to like try and stop you. So that's, uh, I think, one of the main reasons why traveling by yourself is so good. And, you know, there, I mean, I can talk about this for, for like an hour or so. It's just a single question because obviously also it just really completely opens up your mind. You know, you, you see that things aren't, the, thing, the way things are back home, that's not necessarily what's normal, you know, because in other countries it could be completely different. So that's another big realization that uh, you, you start seeing things in perspective. And also, I mean, one of the things that travel did to me was that I, I started realizing that, uh, you know, back where I'm from, I'm, I'm, we're pretty fortunate. And, you know, you guys here in the U.S. are, are I think, are pretty fortunate as well to grow up in a country where, you know, you have quite a lot of opportunity and, and most people are pretty well off. And then when you, uh, you know, when you go to some countries where that's not necessarily the norm, and you see how people yeah. get by um, and just try to make the best out of it with very few resources, it, it kind of, it kind of, um, it made me complain a lot less about, yeah. about you know, sort of third world problem, first world problems, right? It's just, uh, I, I caught myself complaining about things and then I would think, you know, back to the experience that I've had in, in um, uh, in like third world countries and the people that I've met there and yeah. like how, you know, how they were like, how much effort they put in to, to make the best out of, of a very little and I would just feel really embarrassed, you know, I would, I would feel bad. I would, I would be like, why am I complaining about this, you know? This is just something minor that really doesn't awesome. affect yeah, my life that much. You know, I you know couldn't I mean? agree more with everything so it's you also said. Very, sure it can also be very inspiring you know, hours talking you know, about to, to see all how the amazing benefits make the travel. Best out of travel. But lives uh, and, just to kind of wrap you know, things up, um, you know? who are some of your most inspirational, uh, <laughs> some of your most inspirational resources, whether it be maybe a book, maybe it be um, an author or other entrepreneurs. Um, yeah. So, you know, if some of our viewers are looking to kind of you know, figure out some of the things that we've discussed today. Um, who would you send them to and, uh, you know, who's kind of shaped your ideals, I guess? Well, um, let me mention uh, a few a few resources. It'll, for me, it all started by reading The 4-Hour Workweek, which uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll know that one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for those who, uh, who haven't read it, that's definitely... Uh, one of the first books I would read uh, by yep. uh, by Tim Ferriss. Um, in terms of business, there's a, a friend of mine. His name is Jesse Krieger. He runs a, a business in a weekend uh, program, and he's really helped me to find sort of my my passions. He he wrote a book, Lifestyle Entrepreneur, and it covers uh, it. It kind of helps you define like what you want to do and how to build a business around that. 
So I think that that's a really good resource for, for people who are looking to start uh, a business. Um, and then I would also recommend people to to listen to some podcasts. You know, and a few good ones out there are um, the Smart Passive Income podcast by Pat Thin. Um, and then Tim Ferriss actually has a podcast as well. And I think by, by listening to these podcasts, you kind of get into the, mi the right mindset. You know, you, you, you kind of, uh, uh, you start understanding what it takes to, to run something successfully online. And um, yeah, so let's see what else. Um, one course that I can recommend if, if people are looking to start a blog, uh, there's a course called How to Start a Blog That Matters. It's by Corbett Barr, who's a very successful uh, online person. Um, so that's that's something that people could, uh, could check out. And then I've also read a lot of sort of self-improvement books that have really helped me. So let me name a few of them. Um, uh, the Power of Habit is okay. a great book for people who want to awesome. sort of change things. Awesome, yeah, and um, things, several of those uh, resources I've been fortunate enough to and, read. And uh, Anthony Robbins definitely life changing, especially some, for our work. Great books as well. Seems like Awaken anyone who's kind of in this is niche of, of lifestyle entrepreneurship, that was, that's kind of how they got their start. So it's very cool and um, amazing, amazing book. So thanks a lot for uh, coming on to uh, the podcast today, Jasper. It's been super awesome, very, very helpful, and you know, I'm ready to get out there and take on the take on the world, as I'm sure our listeners are as well. Um, so, if anyone wanted to contact you or follow along with your travels and uh, you know read your book, could you tell us where we could reach you at and uh, stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, for those who are interested in uh, potentially renting out their house in Airbnb, you can go to getpaidforyourpad.com and we'll, we'll send you the prologue, the introduction, and the first chapter of the book for free, along with a free part email training course. So if you're interested in doing that, then uh, I think that's a really good start. Big thanks to Jasper Rivers, the Traveling Dutchman, for coming on to today's podcast.